Well, hello everybody, welcome back to Succeed With Omid. The name of the game today while I warm up for my step ups today is core and hip integration. Very quickly, a lot of times when I'm coaching people through back pain cases, for example, they tend to think they have a weak core or inactive glutes or tight hamstrings or stuff like that. And yeah, sometimes those are ingredients in the actual recipe of the problem. But here's the problem. If you just change the ingredients, if you activate the glute and if you activate the core and make it stronger and stretch out the hamstrings, those are still three separate ingredients that don't actually bake together very well. And what this move does is it actually kind of integrates everything into the same movement and they start to learn how to actually work together as a team. So a couple things we got to cover first. The setup for this, if you don't have any pull-up assistance bands, this gets pretty difficult, but I've got them anchored pretty low. These are very light bands. I'm just using this as a warm-up. But a lot of times clients can actually find this to be a really powerful workout doing 20 to 30 repetitions of this with the breathing. It really tends to help the nervous system actually learn how to thrust the hips. Now, I'm going to change the camera angle one more time. Apologize, I'm solo today. I'm going to give you a close-up of my crotch for a little bit. There we go. Now, separately, this one was something that I learned from Gray Cook a long time ago when he was trying to, I think the, the video is called Cooking the Hip Drive or something like that. But for a lot of people, having the band between the legs and reaching backwards and coming through can be very helpful in learning this movement. Here's my challenge with it, and this will still work right, for a lot of people, but when I come back, the very first thing my nervous system wants to do when I come up is lift. And that's not going to drive me forward, that's going to lift me up and in, into my lower back. I have another video on this next one, where I was actually basically saying put the band instead of in the hands on the hips. Now what the band's doing now is it's pulling me down and back, and the hips, when they drive, they push forward and up. That's what the lower seat of the pants actually do. They do this movement. But here's the challenge. I've now taken out all of my core. It doesn't have to do anything because the, the load is below my core. So, do them both at the same time. Now what's happening is because I'm holding this band, my grip is activated, my core is engaged, my lower back has to fire, which it should learn how to fire with the butt. And as I pull both forward at the same time, now my hips really have to learn how to work with the core and a lot of stuff. How to make this harder, bring the feet closer together. You can just walk further forward and really start to work on the balance. And more importantly than both of those, 20 to 30 repetitions of this with the breathing. Inhaling as you open on the way up. Exhaling on the way down. If you've got a weak butt and you need to activate it, float at the top for a couple seconds, really squeezing the cheeks together, and then exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale back. Very quickly, for people that don't have those bands, grab one of these, anchor it low, and then just hold on to them. You can do that with this too. Exhale back, inhale up. I usually try and stay away from sports analogies because I don't know that much about sports, but I know about team-based activities. You can have all of the best performers in the world on the same team, but until they actually learn how to work together to communicate and build off of each other's skill sets, filling in each person's weaknesses and stepping aside for somebody else's strengths to shine, that team is not going to perform very well. And the hips and the core especially work like that. The hips are our primary drive, our engine through the world. And if it's not try working with the core very well, we really start to run into a lot of problems, especially worst case scenarios, back pain. That's the worst dis disabling feeling in the world these days. So uh, try this out. It's a little bit trickier to, than you think, and it's going to look a little funny, especially if you're doing this as gym. If you have a home setup, it's better, um, especially when you start to learn the effectiveness of the exercise. You stop caring about what people think of the gym because it's the best warm-up for kettlebell swings, deadlifts, any types of 
uh, lunging and squatting patterns, any kind of core workout that there's a lot of rotation in, believe it or not, this will actually help out too. So try this out. Let me know how it goes for you. I have more tips for you guys if you want them. Just drop a comment down below and I'll answer any questions in a video format. But that's it for today. I hope this information was very helpful to you guys. As always, have a happy and healthy rest of your day. Talk to you next time.